we'll be setting up a scene for virtual production going over several details, tips, and tricks. Filming in locations like this are more and more possible. And it's not hard to assemble if you know your way around Unreal. Epic is constantly growing its tool set and knowledge base for everything virtual production. You can see on their website they have a whole dedicated write-up, lots of things to click and articles to read, videos to watch, links, um, virtual production pipeline. And if you go over to YouTube, Unreal's page has a growing number of virtual production videos including this in-camera VFX tutorials playlist where you can find a plethora of details for how to set up a virtual production. If you're new to virtual production, here are some considerations to setting up your scene. First, I'm going to start in Photoshop where I have an illustration here of the stage. And you can see um, we have the sound stage here, which would be practical elements, the LED wall or volume and then the virtual stage where Unreal would take over. And it's good to talk with your team and have a plan for what's going to be practical and what's going to be virtual and where that line is going to be. In order to do this you need the dimensions of your stage and your LED wall. This will help us later in Unreal when we actually put in the stage and the LED wall into our engine with some practical elements and some stand-in actors so we can see exactly what things will look like on location. In the Epic Games Marketplace today we're going to be using some free content. Free for the month I saw this Gladiator Arena uh, which is pretty rock solid, awesome. Uh, we'll jump into that. And we're also using these Posed Humans uh, by Epic Games. It's free content on the marketplace as stand-in actors as we're composing our shots. So once you get your once you get dimensions from your stage that you're going to be actually filming on, you can build out the stage here in Unreal and typically that's like an end display setup but for right now I'm just gonna build a simple little blueprint that contains all that information so you can see I've already done that here um, basically just right click blueprint class create a, click on actor and it creates a new blueprint so delete that for now click on viewport inside this blueprint and you can see I dragged and dropped um, the meshes in here into this blueprint and now I have the stage dimensions you can see the LED wall I've got a material on that already uh, it's just a glass material so we can see through it when we put it into our scene so normally compile and then save and so here's the blueprint that I've already set up of the stage and the dimensions and I'll say this about dimensions actually matter um, when you're building on a virtual stage because the stage is only so big and the wall you have to consider when you're filming. There's a secret measuring tool inside of Unreal. If you go up here in the top uh, and change the perspective to top, uh, you can middle zoom in, middle click. So this is the stage, it's selected, and I middle clicked and dragged and this is 920 centimeters. And that converts to 30 feet and uh, about 790 centimeters wide, which is about 25 feet, which is exactly right, and the dimensions are correct. If you want to see the, the units that Unreal is using, you can go to Editor Preferences and type in Units, and it will show right here. Measuring tool units are in centimeters. You can change to meters or kilometers. All right, I'm going to go to our, our arena scene, and you can see that I've already dropped in our stage and I moved it around. For the record, if you want to do that again, just see it's just a drag and drop and then you slide it around. Now just since we were talking about measurements, I was kind of curious to see how big this scene actually is. So if I go to top view and I zoom out, this arena is about, we'll say about 6,000 centimeters in the center. And if I compare that to 6,000 then that's about almost 200 feet and then just because I thought well I mean you got to go compare that to the Colosseum in Rome so zooming down here on the Colosseum there's this cool feature if you didn't know in Google Maps if I click on layers and I switch it to this it's a little easier to see and then I go to more and click on the measure tool you can start clicking and dragging and you can see, let's hide that, 
you can see the distance. Um, so, well, it's kind of hard to see now on the inside. So from here to here, that says about 200 feet. Oh goodness, I have too many now. I don't know how to make it stop. There we go. Uh, 200 feet, 250 feet, I'm sorry, inside of the Colosseum. Just goes to show you how, how huge the actual Colosseum is. So, and obviously let's just zoom around just to see. This is pretty big. Colosseum's even bigger. Okay, the next step was I, once I had my stage in here, I put in these uh, characters, posed humans, meshes, and I just scrolled to find someone that I wanted. Um, I don't know, like, yeah, obviously you're gonna have a guy in here. He's gonna be taking pictures. Yeah, nice. Why not? Let's throw a dog in here. There's a dog, there's a guy. Put him back over here. They're all right there. Okay, great. I wanna go back to um, the, not top view, the, uh, we'll say right view. And I just want to zoom in and see if I can see these people. Okay, so right here. And I'm going to do another quick check. So 200, you know, 177 inch, 177 centimeters. And again, I'm horrible at math. So 177 is about 5.8 feet. So these people are pretty accurate as far as um, to scale. So that's helpful because it's important. Now we drop in a camera. First camera, we'll say, we'll just ignore these other two. I'm gonna hide them just for simplicity. So you're gonna to wanna to think about a few things so the camera is locked in. Um, first is sensor size of your camera that you're actually gonna be filming with on this virtual production stage. So if you go to film back and you can set, you can set a, a preset, which I did here, or you can set a custom uh, and, and actually uh, type in your sensor width and height to get your aspect ratio which combined with the lens that you're going to use, which here we currently have um, a 20 millimeter on this lens that you see. But if I, let me pilot this camera and I tilt up, you can see the edge of the LED wall right here, that line. If I select it, it's a little bit easier to see that, that outline around it. Um, and these are types of things that you, when you lock in the, the size of a people, your, your camera sensor size and your focal length on, uh, of your lens on your camera, then you can start to see, oh, what, what framing can I get? Oh, I'm gonna see the floor here. So we're gonna have to fill the floor with some practical, I don't know, dirt and debris to match this scenic uh, set extension that Unreal is having on this LED wall. Otherwise, I need to tilt up and, uh, you know, a little cowboy shot. But, oh, nope, I can't be this far away with this millimeter because I'll start to see off the wall. And that'll be like, I don't know, black wall or whatever's in the, in the sound stage volume, or you're shooting off the volume at that point. So you either need to zoom in, uh, maybe, or, or change your uh, focal length. So like this one, maybe just go to 24. Oh, perfect. Now, now I don't see off the wall. I don't see the floor. That's great. I'm gonna unpilot this camera. I'm gonna pin it right there and then zoom out a little. So now I know, okay, look, this is great information. I'm right here on the sound stage of my um, my LED, you know, whatever virtual production studio, with my camera. Put the actors right here. They're not too close to the wall. Now I know this is what it's actually going to look like when I go into an actual practical stage with practical subjects, and the LED wall is using this Unreal scene. It's pretty powerful. Here's a few considerations for how you can set up some relationships between your camera and your subject for recomposing different shots around your scene. First, you could just move your, you move your camera uh, and then you have to move your subject. And that just takes a little while. So one option is you could actually bring your, uh, your camera as a child of the subject. So now wherever I move my, my character, the camera follows if I want to move and like, I don't like these pillars over here, let's let's move it over here or let's rotate. So now we're composed over here in this shot. This is, this is helpful. So the camera is a child of the subject, that's one way. Another way is actually the subject or the, the, the mesh is a child of the camera. And the way to do that is it has to be set to movable. So if it's set to static and I try to move it, it won't actually go underneath there. But if I set it to movable, I can move the woman underneath the camera. So now she's a child of the camera. And so once, if I move the camera, then she moves as well. That's another option. 
Um, and in this case, obviously, if I rotate the camera, she would rotate as well. That's great. Um, another option is if you want, I think, more control, you can um, create an actor. So put the, 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 put the camera as a child of the actor and the woman. So now, oh boy, we've got a lot going on here. So now the actor is over here, and if I move it, then both the camera and the woman move. That gives you some options as well. I find it's best to uh, move the actor um, like right exactly by the woman. So I would make it make the actor a child of the woman, zero it out. The actor is actually right at her feet. So and then if you want to rotate it around, it's exactly where you need it to be. One last thing you can do is utilize the look at feature on a camera. So if I type in look and then I use this little pick actor and then I'm going to pick the woman. Uh, so it's chosen her. I have to enable look at tracking and you see it's going to jump to the bottom because if I click on her, you see where her, her axis is, is at her feet. So you can go back to the camera and you can uh, adjust the offset. So move it up. So that's kind of cool. It's a little wonky to me. I would actually prefer I have a little cube in here. It's set to invisible, so I turn it on, and then I'm going to put the cube. Uh, I have to make it movable. Put it as a child of the woman. Zero it out, um, and then I'm going to pull it back out and bring it up to about her head height, and then I'm going to make it. Uh, we'll, we'll say visible can't spell so turn it off so it's not visible and then now I'm going to use this look at and set it to the cube which we've called uh, look at object and hit enable so now if I move this cube around the camera's gonna look at the cube so I can just keep it right here. I can even keep it as a, as a child of a woman so that when I move her, it's actually moving. Uh, but then I still have the ability to tilt the cube down and look wherever I want. And so those are some options as you're composing cameras inside of this virtual set in Unreal. From there, build more camera setups and even levels. But there are quite a few more steps to get prepped for an actual production. But that's the goal, get on an actual stage and do some filming. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, leave a comment below or a like. Subscribe for more content like this. We'll see you next time.